Instructional Phonetics and Phonology Session 4 Articulation and Acoustics The Fourth Part I am Mohsen Reza Zadeh. Currently, I am an assistant professor at the University of Sfahan. Before starting this session, let's have an overview of what we uh, said in previous sessions. If you remember, we said that consonants can be described in terms of five factors, voiced or voiceless, place of articulation, and central or lateral articulation, oral or nasal sounds, and finally manner of articulation last session we talked about manner of articulation if you remember we said that uh, some consonants are called stops and we have two types of stops uh, oral stop and nasal stop we also talked about another manner of articulation called fricative if you remember we said that some sounds like sh or f, uh, or for example, uh, th, these are called fricatives because um, there is close approximation of two articulators, uh, so the air is partially obstructed and a turbulent stream of air is produced. And we also introduced uh, approximant as another manner of articulation like uh, for example, we or ye, these are approximants, or a lateral approximant like le uh, uh, was introduced. We also talked about additional consonantal gestures like trill, uh, as in uh, peru or r in Farsi, or tap or flap, as in pity and also affricates like uh, che or j or glottal stops like for example uh, when we say a uh, a uh, or when we say batman we have a glottal stop uh, today we are going to talk about vowels Articulation of vowel sounds. First, try to answer this question. What is the difference between vowel sounds and consonant sounds? Why is it that we categorize sounds as vowels and consonants? The fact is that while the consonant sounds are mostly articulated via closure or obstruction in the vocal track, vowel sounds are produced with a relatively free flow of air, and they are typically voiced. So the articulators do not come very close together and the airstream is obstructed when we want to produce vowels. This is the major difference. When we want to produce consonants, the airstream is obstructed, but in vowels it is unobstructed. We describe uh, vowels in terms of highest point of the tongue and the position of the lips. So, in order to describe vowel sounds, we consider the way in which the tongue influences the shape through which the airflow must pass. Look at the picture on the right side. As you can see, there is a congruence between the color and the, the vowel that we produce, like mm, E, which is uh, illustrated in red color. You can see the position of the tongue in the mouth. It is higher than when we want to produce, for example, E or A. Uh, the one in blue is A. Or, for example, U. 
look at the shape of the tongue uh, in green color it is oo based on these different positions of the tongue in the mouth we uh, in fact, describe vowels or categorize vowels. In this slide, you can see MRI images of your mouth and the position of the tongue in producing different vowels. The first one on the left is uh, the shape of your mouth and the position of your tongue when you produce a vowel like e e look at the shape of your tongue and also the shape of the lips when we produce a vowel like e next one just right to it is uh, oo Ooh, look at the shape of the lips when we produce oo and also the position of the tongue as you can see for e the tongue is in front position for oo the tongue is in back position in the middle on the left you can see uh, the MRI image of a sound like e eh. eh, or on the right side in the middle you can see o o at the bottom on the left is a look at the position of the lips and also look at the shape of your tongue a as you can see the tongue is lower than when you say e in E, the tongue is higher, but here the position of the tongue is lower when we produce A. Ah. And the last one on the right side is A. Ah. Ah. As you can see, the mouth is wide open. Look at the position of the lips. And also look at the shape of the tongue. To articulate a vowel sound, the tongue, jaw, and the lips are placed to create a tube between larynx and the lips, as you can see in these MRI images. The soft palate is normally raised, sealing off the nasal cavity, except in nasalized vowels. No constriction occurs that might cause turbulence. That is, here we don't have any kind of friction because they are all vowels, not consonants. As you can see, uh, in all these vowel gestures, the tongue tip is down behind the lower front teeth and the body of the tongue is domed upward. You can check if this is so in your own pronunciation. Try producing sounds like E, U, A, A. And then try to concentrate and feel the position of your tongue in the mouth. When we want to talk about articulation of vowel sounds, uh, we think of this space inside the mouth as having a front versus a back and a high versus a low area. Thus, in the pronunciation of um, a word like heat and hit, we talk about high front vowels because the sound is made with the front part of the tongue in a raised position if you look at the image on the right side of the screen you can see different positions of your tongue in the mouth for the production of different vowels 
for example a vowel like e is the one on the upper side left hand corner e as you can see it is high but compare it with uh, u on the right side again u is high so e and u both of them are high but e is front vowel u is a back vowel now you can compare it with a at the bottom on the left side and a again at the bottom on the right side here both a and a both of them are low but a is front and a is back we will talk about uh, these in detail in uh, the coming slides you can consider this box as your mouth you can see that it has a front central and back positions in the horizontal axis and in the vertical axis it has high mid and low and inside you can find different vowels for example e is front vowel which is high or a is again a front vowel which is low or u is a back vowel which is high we can categorize vowels based on different positions of the tongue in the mouth now look at these examples for front vowels uh, an example is beat beef or key or me all of them are examples of e which is a front vowel and it is a high front vowel next front vowel is e like in bit or myth or women e is another front vowel as in bed or dead or said next is a as in bad or laugh or rap central vowels are e and a e as in above or oven or support notice the vowel after s sound in support see support e here is a central vowel and it is mid central next central vowel is a as in but or blood or dove or tough what about back vowels oo as in boo or move or to or you all of them are back vowels and they are high next back vowel is o as in book or could or put o next is o as in born or the british pronunciation for fall which is fall and finally we come to uh, the final back vowel which is a ah, as in bob or swan now look at these four words and pay attention to vowels in these words heat hit head and hat can you tell me the place of articulation for these vowels 
Yes, you're right. All of them are front vowels. Heed, hit, head, and hat. E, I, E, and A. All of them are front vowels. So the vowels in which the highest point of the tongue is in the front of the mouth are called front vowels. So in a word like heed, we can say that E is a front vowel. What about high or low? Yes, E is a high front vowel. This is how we categorize vowels. Or for example, in a word like had, yes, a is a front vowel, but is it high or low? Yes, it is low. So a is a low front vowel. As you can see in this box, number one is heed and number four is had which is low but both of them number one and four both of them are front vowels vowels in between number two and three are called mid front vowels so for hit we can say that hit is a mid front vowel or mid high front vowel if you uh, pay attention you can see that in the picture number two is higher than number three so but both of them number two and three both of them are mid so we say that e in hit is mid high front vowel but number three head a e, is mid low front vowel because both of them are in the middle but number two is higher high mid high front vowel but number three head is mid low front vowel look at these three words food good and father now uh, are they front vowels or back vowels U, O, and A. Yes, all of them are back vowels. So we can say that the vowels in which the highest point of the tongue is in the back part of the mouth can be considered as back vowels. Now look at food. Food is certainly a back vowel, but is it high back vowel or low back vowel? Yes, U is high back vowel. The position of the tongue is back and it is high, so we call it high back vowel. What about A in father? A is back vowel. Is it high or low? Try to pronounce U then A. U A. U A. You can see that for U your tongue is high, for A your tongue is low. So father A is low, but again back vowel, just in uh, U, which is a back vowel. A is a low back vowel. What about the ones in the middle? Here, as you can see in the picture, number seven is food, number five is father. What about number six? Number six is good, O, small O, good. Vowels in between are called mid back vowels. As for front vowels, I explained in the previous slide. Here, for good, we can say that good is a mid-back vowel. Or some people say it is mid-high back vowel.
say these words and notice your lips heed hit head hat father good food now try to pronounce just the vowels e e e a a o u can you tell me what happened to your lips are they the same when you say a vowel like for example u and a or e what happens to your lips are they the same of course not for u you round the lips it is called lip rounding the movement of the lips in a circular form is called lip rounding as you can see in the images when you produce a sound like e and when you produce a sound like u uh, you can see the difference between the shape of the lips or for a and o as you see for u and o we have lip rounding so vowels can be rounded as in hood or unrounded as in heat as you can see uh, lip gestures vary considerably in different vowels they are generally closer together in the mid high and high back vowels like in food or in good though in some form of american english this is not so look at the position of your lips in a mirror while you say just the vowels in heed hit head hat father good foot if you look at it in the mirror then you will probably find that in the last two words there is a movement of the lips in addition to the movement that occurs because of the lowering and raising of the jaw this movement is called lip rounding and it is usually most noticeable in the inward movement of the corner of the lips in summary we can say that the targets for vowel gestures can be described in terms of three factors first the height of the body of the tongue that is high or low or mid second is the front or back position of the tongue as you saw uh, we had a diagram in which we had front central and back vowels and uh, the third one is the degree of lip rounding using these three factors we can describe vowels in addition to single vowel sounds we regularly create sounds that consist of a combination of two vowel sounds known as diphthongs when we produce diphthongs our vocal organs move from one uh, position to another position for example when we want to produce a sound like uh, i in by or I or my pi psi you can see that there is a movement from a to e the movement in this diphthong is from low towards high front alternatively we can use movement uh, from low towards high back as in for example uh, bow or doubt or cow if you look at the picture you can see that there is a movement from a to o as in cow another example is a as in bait or eight 
great, late, or say. Another diphthong is o, like boat, or home, or throw, or tow. Pay attention, these are typically used uh, in American English. The examples I, I gave you are all um, in American English. And the last diphthong is a combination of O and E sound. A back vowel and a front vowel. A back, uh, a low back vowel and a front high vowel as in boy or noise the diphthong is oi so as you can see this diagram provides a rough idea of how diphthongs are produced and uh, as you can see is followed by a list of sounds with examples to illustrate some of the variation in the spelling of these words all I, I think this is all about diphthongs. Up to now, we've talked about vowels and consonants. Vowels and consonants can be thought of as the segments of which speech is composed. Together, they form the syllables that make up utterances. Superimposed on the syllables are other features known as suprasegmentals. Features such as stress, pitch and intonation, and sometimes length, are superimposed on the consonant and vowels. Variation in stress are used uh, in English to distinguish between a noun and a verb, as in an insult versus to insult, or as in pervert versus pervert, which is a verb. So one usage of stress is to distinguish between a noun and a verb. Or, for example, overflow or to overflow. You should uh, find that in the nouns, the stress is on the first syllable, but in the verbs, it is on the last. Thus, stress can have a grammatical function in English. It can also be used for contrastive emphasis. For example, I want a red pen, not a black pen. Stress in English is produced by increased activity of the respiratory muscles producing greater loadness as well as by exaggeration of consonants and vowels properties such as vowel height and stop aspiration, and also exaggeration of pitch, so that low pitches are lower and high pitches are higher. When I want to put emphasis on the color, then I put stress on color words like this. I want a red pen, not a black pen. Or for example, in a sentence like this, I want a pencil, not a pen. Here, the emphasis is on the fact that I wanted a pen, or I wanted a pencil, not a pen. But in the example you can see here, the emphasis is not on pen, but it is on the color of the pen, and how you got it, because I uh, put my stress on the color words, red and black. So, two functions of stress in English are uh, grammatical uh, function and emphasis function. Another supersegmental is pitch. Pitch is the height of the voice or 
rate of vibration of the vocal folds. Pitch can be high, mid, or low. It depends on your feelings. When you are interested or you're surprised or you're shocked, the pitch of your voice is higher. It goes up in pitch. And uh, for example, when you want to inform us, you want to just say a sentence, the pitch is mid, not too high, not too low. But when you are bored and when you're disinterested, the pitch of your voice is low. For example, suppose that you got an A on your final examination and you enter home. Then you want to tell that to one of your family members. You, for example, say, hello, today I got an A. This is a high pitch sound. But sometimes um, you are bored and it is not important to you that you got A. You enter home and you say, hello, I got an A. See, this is a low pitch sound. And sometimes it is not too good and not too bad, not too interested and not interested. Then here the pitch can be mid, like you say, hello, I got an A today. This is mid. So it's all to do with how you feel about what you're talking about. Pitch is related to that. Mainly uh, girls and women have high pitch sounds, but men have low pitch or mid pitch sounds. Intonation. The pitch pattern in a sentence is known as the intonation. Variation in the pitch of the voice is intonation. Listen to the intonation, uh, that is the variation in pitch of the voice, when someone says the sentence like, This is my father. Now, try to find out which syllable has the highest pitch and which has the lowest pitch. In most people's speech, the highest pitch will occur on the first syllable of father and the lowest on the second, the last syllable in the sense. Now, observe the pitch changes in the situation is this your father? In this sentence, the first syllable of father is usually on a lower pitch than the last syllable. Or look at this example. That's a cat. That's a cat. Here we have falling intonation and rising intonation. As you can see in the second example, I used change in intonation in order to change the grammatical function of the sentence. Although there is no change in the wording, but the second one, that's a cat. That's a cat. The second one is a question not a statement. So today first we had a review on different places and manners of articulation. Later we talked about articulation of vowel sounds and we said that we can describe uh, the targets for vowel gestures um, in terms of three factors, the height of the body of the tongue, the front back position of the tongue, and the degree of 
lip rounding. And finally, we talked about suprasegmentals. And we said that superimposed on the syllables are gestures known as suprasegmentals. We said that suprasegmentals include variations in stress, pitch, and intonation. This is the end of the fourth session. Goodbye, everybody.